two years ago today that we lost a legend, icon, the Hall of Famer, the Mamba, far too soon, and his beautiful and talented Gianna. We'll be honoring Kobe Bryant throughout the show. And my prayers are with his wife, Vanessa, his daughters, his parents, all his loved ones on what is an extremely difficult day. And Jay, Stephen A, you've been around basketball most of your lives. I know both of you know Kobe personally. Uh, I'll start with you, Jay. How will you remember him? He was a mentor to me in so many different ways, uh, inspired me. And today, obviously, Molly, we were talking about this before the show, very heavy day. Yeah. Uh, I feel like it kicked off a lot of things two years ago. A lot of with, pain. Yeah, with where we are now. But I come at today with a level of appreciation and gratitude because how I live my life, it's funny. Stepping on the court or stepping into the arena here with you guys and Stephen A., there was a relentlessness. There was an attack mindset. There was an appreciation for the detail. And there was something passionate about that, Stephen. You know what I mean? There was something uplifting and rewarding about attacking each moment of your life with the same kind of passion and sense of urgency that Kobe Bryant did. And I try to do that with my daughter, my wife, my son, my family, my mom, my dad. And that's how I try to embrace a day like today yeah. with how I will attack my future days. That's a good way of putting it. I mean, there's no doubt about that. I remember one of the conversations that I had, and it was, it's one of my most memorable conversations with Kobe, I had, quite frankly, on ESPN two years ago in 2005 to 2007. And, you know, everybody was talking about it at the time, particularly when I did the sit-down interview with Allen Iverson. Mm. And they were like, you know, saying, hey, Stephen A trying to be Oprah. Stephen A going to be Oprah. And Kobe saw me, and he said, he used the F word, but I won't say that, obviously. <laughs> he said, forget Oprah. Harpo. Mm -hmm. Harpo. He was in his mid-20s. Yeah. That's how he thought. And... You know, when you consider the fact that this dude, a five-time champion, a former league MVP, one of the greatest players in NBA history, um, and what he brought to the table on the basketball court, he had his post-basketball career planned and mapped out. He knew what he was going to do. And I only say for the immediate future because he constantly evolved and was always looking to improve upon that. And anybody who knew him knew he didn't care for those who wanted to limit themselves. He didn't care about limitations. He wanted you to springboard. He wanted you to maximize your potential. And then he insisted that you go out and inspire others to do the same. And so when I think about him, you know, today, um, and one of the things and people don't realize is, you know, I, you know, you think about him a lot when you watch the NBA today. I've often told you, I'm always, I, my personality is my personality, and I get that. Mm -hmm. But it, it vibes with those old school cats. The Hall of Famers are the ones who hold me accountable. I cannot tell you how many superstars have called me over the years. Uh-uh. Don't let that dude off the hook. You call that out. You do it to me. Mm -hmm. That's what they said. He's passed now. Kobe was one of those dudes. Mm. He didn't sit up there and talk about any players or anything like that. He didn't roll like that. But what he would say is, excuse me. You hold us accountable. He said, wait a minute. If I set up there and I'm shooting like garbage and I ain't getting the job done or I'm not committed to winning or anything like that, you'd call me out. Don't let anybody off the hook. Hold us all accountable because that helps uplift the game. Mm. And that's a big, big deal to me because when I'm talking about sports the way that I do, it's not just him. He epitomizes and personifies what so many others before him would say about how we – have to protect the game and the integrity of the game by holding people accountable for their effort and their commitment, not their skill set, but their effort and their commitment to excellence. And that's what he's all about. That's what he personified. And, you know, that's why we remember him today. Yeah, and I just want to say two things quickly. To your point, Jay, Kobe would be telling us, don't fight the old, build the new. How can you be your best spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally? And when I think of the word Kobe Bryant, that's what it make, he makes you strive to be, to be the greatest version of yourself. And the other thing, I just want to share one story. This, I think I was like 22 years old working for ESPN Mobile. Remember when we had the ESPN mm -hmm. phone? Yeah. And I got sent out to Southern California for a Powerade commercial. And they were with Kobe. And Kobe did the commercial in English, in Spanish, and Italian. <laughs> He's brilliant. He's so cultured. And I was just so impressed by that. And like you said, 
when he passed away, it kicked off a lot of pain, a lot of pain for all of us, uh, me personally. And one thing that I actually have done during this pandemic, I've never said it, is I'm in school full time studying Spanish. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, Co really? Kobe, he really does, because yeah. my goal is to be able to interview in Spanish as well. But I never said it because I didn't want people to start talking to me because I'm not there yet. But really, that Mamba mentality, I just, I strive to be like him. And what a legacy that is. Yeah. And just to hear his name makes you want to be a better person and your best in every aspect. He's such a beautiful spirit. And my heart just breaks for his wife and his children. And I'm sending them all my strength and love and prayers. And it's, I hope they have a peace yeah. that passes all understanding. Because I know today's going to be a difficult mm -hmm. day. It's devastating. But I think that, you know, we'd all be devastated. And I'm just going to leave it at this because I know we got to move on. It's devastating for him to be gone. It's devastating to know that his 13-year-old daughter is gone too. Yeah. Along with seven others. And that, but how you go also impacts us. Mm. If Kobe had died of natural causes, we'd mourn and we'd be incredibly sad. But the tragic fashion in which it happened is really, really what stays. I mean, I'm in California sometimes, and I'm and I'm driving, and you know, going towards Calabasas and stuff like that. You know, it hits your head, and you're like, "Damn!" And it just messes with your whole spirit at that particular moment. And that, and, and sometimes, that's what it really, really affects a lot of people too. It's how it happened, not just that it happened. Yeah, he meant so much to so many people. Yeah. Um, and one last thing, the best trip I ever went on in my life was to Italy, and, and Kobe hooked that up for us. So I will always thank him for that. It was my only time in Europe. It was incredible. We know he spent some of um, his childhood there. So well, that, that's a similar. positive, you know, that's a positive right. memory, the Almafi Coast. So thank you, Kobe, for Can that. Can I say quoi? Yeah. Like, that's him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's, yeah. that's him. Yeah. yeah.